cheaper, much safer, much faster, and less energy consumed. In the future, by controlling the airflow over wings and the direction of it, the need for a rudder will be rendered obsolete. For individual transportation or small groups, you have the vertical landing and takeoff VTOL aircraft of the future. They are called lift fuselage, as the body itself generates the lift for this type of aircraft, and it is propelled electronically, meaning particles are electrified and discharged from the rear of the craft, which propel the craft forward. And for hovering, we then eject the same propellant downward and generate a ring vortex, a whirling vortex beneath the craft, and the control of that vortex determines the speed downward. We're going over to the model dome where we have models of future type buildings mm -hmm. and how they go together. Here you have the city system. I, I put domes here, but there'll be very many variations. In other words, yes. What are those? These are research centers. Okay. This is a, uh, medicine, agronomy, uh, population designing, pro improvement of products, energy systems. Energy in the future will be geothermal, most of it. You can get that from the Earth. There's enough geothermal energy for thousands of years without worrying about anything. And I'm not talking about solar wind power or, or wave power or tidal power. All that is extra. So there's no shortage of anything except brains in Washington. You can't make money from the sun. What's that? You can't make money from the sun. No, you can't. Exactly that. Now all these buildings can come apart and be recycled. Now if you follow me, we'll go to the future. All right, let's uh, explore the thinking of Jacques Fresco and the society he'd like to see. Now, we'll start with this, and you tell me... I'll try what, to point it out. Yeah, you can point right at it. Most of the cities are based on natural configurations, basic designs in nature. The center of the city, the nucleus, will house an electronic computer, which only controls water purification, the atmospheric conditions, that is, it controls air contamination systems, they maintain safety, they oversee the environment, maintain ecological balance between animal life and plant life. The center of the city is a university, a university that covers all subjects related to man. There's no courses that are used to exploit or abuse any other human being. All repetitious jobs will be phased out. We feel that machines ought to do the filthy or the repetitious or the boring jobs, that man has to be free to pursue the higher things, the higher possibilities of man. In other words, at this So you came up with this idea for a, a, a round city? A round city, a round governmental branch. And then extending out of it would be the Department of Agriculture, Education, Oceanography, the disciplines. The circular scheme or plan brings each district closer to the central dome, which contains the medical, food, shopping, everything else that people need. The circular arrangement makes it easier to operate using far less energy than any other system. And if you start at one end of the city and go through the city, you always return to the same place. Whereas in a linear city, you go to one end, you have to backtrack to get to the same point. So the circular scheme is by far the most efficient. And when cities are contracted in the future, they will be contracted as a whole, as an entire system. In that way, all of the parts and components would be delivered in stages. Like sequel one will be the underground the heating system, the electric generators, the piping systems, the recycling systems, 
then after that, the next layer, which would serve as the first layer that contains the architecture, the foundations for all the buildings, and after that, the erection of structures up from the foundations. Starting with the central portion of the city, working its way out to the different radial sectors, and then out to the final housing sectors, and then to the agricultural belt, and then to the recreation areas. The cities themselves are prefabricated. Most of the elements that comprise the structures of the cities are interchangeable, interlocking. They are designed so they can be disassembled just as they were assembled. So the new cities will be updated continuously. As the waters are piped into the cities, they are checked. And to whatever extent contamination exists, the water processing plants evaporate the water, recondense it, and cleanse it. In other words, all waters piped into the city will be monitored constantly, not by a monitoring system, but several monitoring systems. The same is true of the air above and around the city. It's constantly monitored. All of the rooftops are photovoltaic. All of the skin, outer skin of the building, converts solar radiation into electrical energy. As we move beyond the third sector, we come to tennis courts, parks. Beyond that is the residential district, which consists of lakes, waterfalls, all kinds of beautiful plants throughout the area. And each house is concealed by plants so you can't see another building. Some people prefer, as in the next sector, to live in apartment houses. The apartments have drama groups, recreation, swimming pools, discussion groups, and so many other facilities. The disadvantage of living in a private home is you would have to go to the various places to access the same things. Instead of motor vehicles in the city, all transportation is carried on by circular conveyors that we call transveyors. They move radially, circumferentially, and vertically. They serve the function of elevators, buses, conveyors. But if you wish to go to another city, you can take an elevator down beneath the central dome, which has maglev trains, etc., that will transport you to the center of any other city or any other region. There will be no waste products. Just as in nature, there are no waste products. All materials that we would formally call waste would be recycled and converted into new products. And that when the city hits a certain number of people, we stop the development and let everything go back to nature between this and the next city. It doesn't mean that we can solve all the problems. We can just design and build a far better environment to advance all human beings. Like I said, not everybody will live in a dome. This is different types of architecture. This may be a vacation house. I don't know, like I say, what people will choose to live in, but that would be up to each individual. What we want to do is then build cities in the sea. You pick the city you want to live in. Some of these cities are for ocean mining. The oceans have tungsten, manganese, phosphorus, all kinds of chemicals that we may need and they're made available to all people. And you don't have to worry about being blind in the future. We design cities so you can hear an open door and you can sense a table because you have built-in sensors. You know, and we work on making artificial methods for visual things for everybody because anybody can lose their eyesight. There's no more nickels and dimes for medical research. This is what the army of the future is all about. Do you get it? Okay. There's usually an alligator sleeping down here. Let me see. Are you betting that people will not declare war on each other? <laughs>